This here is a bonus video covering torque. What torque covers is the very beginning of considering what happens when you don't have a rigid body all fo focused at a point, but rather it can also spin around. It's unfortunate we don't have enough time to really go into depth with this unit, but it does have a lot of application in terms of looking at the way the human body is constructed as well as bodies of many other types of animals of course. The first thing about considering torque is now you have to consider the body having specific dimensions and extents. It's not all at a point. Sometime this beam is horizontal and then later time maybe the beam would have moved down this way possibly. And the thing to first notice is, yes, the middle of the beam has moved, but also the orientation of the beam has changed. And that's the thing about torque, is we're starting to consider also the orientation of the body. In dealing with the spinning motion, torque basically plays the role of a force, but for the spinning motion. To get a better handle on this, let's set up a few contrasting cases. If, say if you have a door or something, or in this case if this same beam is sitting on a pivot of some sort. Compare and contrast these two cases. If I push with a certain force in the middle, or I push with a certain force at the end, same force, you're going to get a bigger effect if you push further away. So this distance, which we'll call R, seems to matter. Right, hopefully you can appreciate that in this case on the right here is going to give you a bigger torque than this case you have here. It's going to want to spin more. Another contrasting case, which might be a little more subtle, is for the two beam. If I were to push that way versus if I was to push, say, this way on an angle, with the same force and the same distance away, hopefully it's not too surprising that you're going to get much more of a spinning effect here than you would here. Because most of the force over here is trying to pull away from the socket rather than having the beam move around the socket. So the takeaway is, if you assemble everything together, that the torque depends on both how far you are applying the force, so the further away, the more spinning you're going to produce. Of course, the more you push. And then there's also the sine theta term. We're using sine because we're going to get the maximum at 90 degrees. So let's apply it to our case here. Here, if we were to draw the free body diagram, we have a 2 kilogram stick and Gravity acts for a uniform beam, acts at the center of that particular body. So we know that you have F beam G, and this here is 1.5 meter away, exactly halfway on that beam. And for this mass here, so, so we don't have to call it a block, it's going to act in the middle of the block. So from the wall here, it's 3 minus 0.1, so that's 2.9 meters. So two things to notice. Gravity for a rigid body still acts at the middle of the body, so we have to find out where the middle of the body is. And also we have to start noting down the position where the force gets applied, specifically the distance perpendicular to those forces. And then at the wall support right here, the this end of the beam is being held fixed. So it's going to have some force trying to hold it up, as well as possibly some force trying to stop the beam from shifting sideways away from the wall or even towards the wall. And this joint here is also preventing my stick from rotating as a result of all the different weights we have drawn in. And that's in fact what we're asked for in the question. Define my x and y component, but also in these kind of questions you have to define a pivot point where you can 
talk about your torque. There's only two specific points that you can pick. One is you can pick the center of mass of the entire system, which is difficult here because it's got two pieces to it. But also you can pick a point that is not moving. And what's implied here is that this is being supported, so nothing is moving. So in that sense, any point is not moving, so we can pick any point we wish. Typically, we would pick this point back here, and we draw a little triangle to specify that's the point we have picked to take our torque around. So we call that point A for now. And what we know is, sure, it's not moving, so we know that my A is equal to zero. So therefore, my sum of forces is equal to zero in both the x and y, but that doesn't help me solve for the torque. What helps me solve for the torque is a statement about what the torque is doing, and then what we know is a sum of summing up all the torque around, in this case, point A. That's all going to add up to zero because the entire object is not going to be spinning. So when you try to sum up the torque, you got to go through each force and find out how far each of these things are to apply this equation we have here. Thankfully, in all these cases, the theta is 90 degrees, so we can drop that sine theta term, so we can just start writing these things. However, one more thing we have to define now that we're summing up torque, is we have to define which way is positive torque. And by convention, we're going to say counterclockwise is positive. So first thing we know is the torque we're after, let's call it the reaction torque. That's a positive torque. Plus, then you have Rx and Ry, right? Both of those have no displacement. They act right at the point, and they don't contribute to the torque. Then we have my 2.9 meters times my Fmg. And in this case, they're going clockwise, so I introduce a negative sign right in there. Similarly, we have Fbg, which is also negative. Shifting things around, we know that my torque R and all the masses with the Mg, shifting them both over, both the negative becomes positive. And we get 57.8 something Newton times meter as the unit works out. Now note that we don't usually collapse this into a joule because joules for energy. So torque, we're just going to use Newton times meters. At this point, I just like to draw a quick parallel as a wrap up to say the model of a human arm, for instance. So you can imagine that here's your arm with your fingers and it's holding on to some kind of mass in the end, just like kind of this problem. In this case, your elbows is your joint, but your elbow by itself is not able to resist the twisting. What you need, I guess in this case, your bicep pulling way back here. If you draw the free body diagram, you have your F ball G, but you also have, you have to support your bone, or I guess your arm, because your flabby flesh also has some mass. And then using this as a pivot, you still need to have some kind of muscle force to hold up the ball. The interesting discussion is there's a trade-off that's happening here. You notice how the way our arm's constructed, this distance between our muscle and our pivot point is so small. So to apply the same torque, if your distance is small, then your force has to be bigger and bigger. So then your muscle actually has to provide a lot more force in order to achieve the same torque. But consider the alternative, right? Same arm, right? If you wanted your muscle to lift a lot more stuff, for instance, but not requiring the same amount uh, of force, you might be tempted to put your muscle way out here, right? So that you have a nice long distance. But for many other things, that's not very convenient. First of all, your arm is going to be really fat and you can't really reach into places with your slender arm. 
And then also, if you were to try to lift up the ball to over, say, this level, right? Lift it up even higher. You can achieve a huge movement with the ball this way without actually contracting your muscle all that much. So that's a trade-off here. So even though the distance from the pivot point is so much smaller for our muscle the way it's built, there's other advantages to having that arrangement such as the slender arm and also that your muscle fiber don't have to contract a lot in order for you to achieve a large range of motion. So just a little teaser into these kind of rotational motion stuff. There's more things to be considered and hopefully some of you will head in that direction.